from a bright and sunny Ladakh, we are at one of the northernmost points of the country. We are at Turtuk and this is amongst the lowest parts of Ladakh. Over the next couple of days, we'll be driving to the highest parts of Ladakh and in the process, crossing three of the highest passes in the world. Now let's check out the cars we are going to be doing this journey in. This is the most special parking you'll find these cars at. This is the made for India, made in India Škoda Slavia. And this is the very European Škoda Kodiak. Now, of course, this is a front wheel drive sedan. This is a 4x4 SUV. So there'll be a lot to talk about the cars. Of course, lots to talk about the journey. So I think we should get cracking. Rahul, Cyrus, let's go, yeah. Come on, yeah, now. I do understand why they are taking their time, but we have a lot of ground to cover, so I think we should get a move on now. We leave Thang village grateful that we live such shielded lives, all thanks to the folks at our borders. Day one for me is behind the wheel of the Slavia. I've driven the Škoda Slavia a lot before, but the view out of the windscreen today is just something else. Ladakh is it's just a spectacular place. And it's the starkness and the vastness that gets you first. There are some green patches alongside the river, but if you look beyond, it's all brown. And then there's the scale of the things. The mountains are just towering thousands of feet above you. You feel this small. Whether you feel small or not, the large-hearted Slavia fits right in here. The Slavia with us is the 1.5 TSI DSG and as ever, the engine is feeling energetic, the gearbox is quick and the steering is crisp. I think the next few days of driving are going to be great fun. The initial bit of the drive is surprisingly easy and that's all thanks to the superb road that connects to Leh. The new environment also introduces me to new facets of the Slavia. One of the takeaways of the drive in the Slavia so far is that it is really well damped. Because while the surface of the road is smooth, there are quite a few dips and crests and some of them can actually catch you off guard. But even on the worst of them, the Slavia doesn't hit its bump stop and always feels very settled. The road gets better and flatter as we approach Hundar in the Nubra Valley where we'll be taking a break to meet its most famous resident, the double-humped camel. We don't drive all too far with another must-see of the region in close proximity. We are making another pit stop, this time we stopped at the Diskit Monastery which is home to a 108 foot statue of the Maitreya Buddha. Unfortunately, we won't have much time to spend here because we are well beyond schedule and we have to make it to Khardungla and we have to make it there fast.
and then it hits. I don't know if it's mountain sickness or inadequate hydration or both a demonic headache takes over. I quietly take the Kodiak's rear seat, make the most of the headrest, thoughtful fold down supports and zone out while the meds kick in. The next hour or so is a blur but as I resurface there's a deterioration in conditions on the ascent to Kardungla. Battered sections, the need to precariously slither past heavy duty road repair machinery on slinky mountain routes and the odd apocalyptic dust storm are part and parcel of the journey. Then again, who said it would be easy? And after a lot of twists and turns, literally, we make it to the top. So we made it to Khardungla. Quite uh, honestly, in the nick of time, the sun is just about to set. Now, Khardungla is a place of great importance. It was formerly home to the world's highest motorable road. Still, 17,982 feet, no mean feet by any stretch of the imagination. The Skodas have been great on the journey up so far. They've done better than, well, some crew members at these high altitudes. It really helps that these engines are turbocharged. They've made the most of the thin air around us. We are headed down to Leh. There's still a lot of ground for us to cover. Before it gets dark, I think we should really make a move. But yeah, pass number one, done. A flat tyre delays our departure, but Rahul pulls off a quick high altitude pit stop that Red Bull F1 team would be proud of. And then we drive into the sunset. It's a relatively early morning start the next day. Jule, on today's agenda is a slightly touristy trip. We'll be driving down to Pangong So, but over the course of the journey, we'll also be crossing Changla. My drive for the day is the Kodiak. It's a friendly SUV and feels at home at once, but it's also a large SUV and its size wouldn't make it ideal transport for a visit to Leh's shopping area. Thankfully, our plan is very different and wide open spaces are what we encounter. The roads are surprisingly smooth. In fact, you have to be careful with your right foot because if you aren't, even on this mountainous terrain, you could get that beep for going above 80 kilometers an hour, which is not recommended. And then the road just disappears. The closer we get to Changla, the worse the surface seems to get. The road is under constant repair and some places are really challenging. It's as much of a test of a driver's ability to avoid obstacles as it is of the car's ability to take a beating. In all this juggling, we somehow forget we are also constantly gaining altitude, eventually topping out at 17,688 feet. Ah, so we've made it to Changla, it's the third highest pass of Ladakh and it's a strategically very important pass but tourists will know it because it's a very important waypoint on the way to Pangong and that's where we're headed today. So I think I'll continue the talking after a bit of sightseeing here. The road greatly improves as we descend down, giving a much needed break for our backs.
I'm glad we are back on metal roads because we've been through some really bad stretches of road and stretches where there's been absolutely no roads. But to the Slavia's credit, it's done everything that the Kodiak has done so far. But I think the story would be very different had we been filming this uh, in April when there are streams of water gushing across the surface, the ice is melting. I think the front wheel drive Slavia would just not have been able to keep up with the 4x4 Kodiak. We take a short halt to see the local marmots really enjoying a day of bright sunshine. If you do head there, please don't feed them. The subsequent journey has its tricky sections, especially towards the end where the road was closed for maintenance, but the first sight of Pangongso makes it all worth it. After a pretty long and uh, adventurous journey, we finally made it to Pangongso or Pangong Lake and my god, this place is just unbelievably gorgeous. Now we've seen a lot of Ladakh already but Pangongso takes your breath away. Just look at the blues and greens and how they contrast with the brown mountains behind. And don't you think the Slavia's crystal blue and the Kodiak's lava blue also really work well in this setting? Now, as for the lake itself, it is the world's highest saltwater lake and two-thirds of it is actually in China, which, as the crow flies, isn't all that far. A lot of photos and some tomfoolery later, we start the journey back to Leh. Two days, two passes. We are on our way to Hanle, which will be base camp for us on our climb towards Umlingla. Now, we have been in Ladakh for a couple of days already, but today's route feels a bit different in terms of the scenery. There's a bit more green around, there are even a few more shades to the mountains, including some reds. We're driving alongside the Indus and the roads are really smooth. Let's hope it just stays that way. I'm happy to report we get what we hoped for. Now, the further we are going on this route, the scenery, the views that we are getting are getting even more panoramic. It's like someone has just pushed the mountains on the sides and what you get are these large patches of grassland in between. It's just so different from the roads we've been on all this while. The drive is special because there's just so much to take in. And cutting through the scene is one brilliant road. The best seat in the house, of course, is the one behind the wheel. The roads are smooth and curvy and you'll just be smiling to yourself in a setting like this. As for the way the Kodiak handles, I really like that it's very neutral in its handling and feels very chilled out and just goes with the vibe of the place. Over the drive, the crew and I also appreciate one of the highlights on the Kodiak. 
panoramic sunroofs are an absolute craze in India, but you'll get your money's worth in a setting like Ladakh. Because clear blue skies or these monstrous mountains around you, your passengers will get a clear view just looking through the roof. And it also helps that it lets in a bit of heat in as well, especially when you're driving through a cold place like this. I have plans to put that sunroof to full use later at night too. We're at Hanle and this is one of India's best places to go stargazing. Tonight we've had some good luck and some bad luck. Good luck because we've got the ultra rare blue moon in all its glory. Bad luck because the moon's so bright, we actually can't see the Milky Way which is visible on other nights. I guess you win some, you lose some. Today is the day we go up, up and away. It's time to climb to Umlingla. The route is about 85 kilometers, but it'll take us a good few hours. I soon understand why. I was told that the first part of the drive to Umlingla would be a bit tough, but no one mentioned that there wouldn't be any roads at all. What we're driving on are dirt tracks and this could really pass off as a rally stage. Thank God the Slavia has all the clearance it does. You're just driving through this vast expanse. You have no aid, there's no navigation, there's no GPS, no mobile phone connectivity. You're just following these trails, hoping that it's leading you to the right place. You're literally on your own here. This place is so desolate, so expensive. It, I mean, I'd picture this is what driving on Mars would be like. Over the crazy drive, Rahul's polite request to switch driving duties get more aggressive and finally I have to give up the hot seat. I wish I'd switch to the Kodiak because he goes full loon. Well, as Nikhil mentioned, this section right here is literally like a rally stage and I'm not giving up on the driving seat for this particular section because the Slavia is so much fun here then I can make it dance the way I want it to dance. <laughs> Rahul really likes the Slavia. Well, I've been driving the Slavia for the past couple of days through some really, really fantastic roads, but also some really nasty roads where there was no road at all, zero tarmac, and some really nasty bumps where you would assume that the car would scrape or bottom out. But the Slavia, man, it has impressed me and how 179mm of ground clearance really counts for something. We switched driving duties once again and just in time for me because out of nowhere comes a smoothly surfaced road. After what seemed like a never-ending stretch of dirt road, we are finally back on a metal road and this road is the one that will finally lead us to Umlingla. Buzz is that it's going to be smooth sailing all the way. The road does not disappoint, nor does the scenery. This road just cuts through such a Spartan landscape. It's, it's almost like a road to nowhere. And amplifying that feeling is that there are no people around. In our two hour or so journey from Hanle, we've been passed by two bikers and one taxi. The final journey also has Cyrus open up and talk about the Kodiak that he's hogged for much of the trip. I've been driving the Kodiak a lot on this trip and we've still got some way to go. For a big car, I'm quite pleased with the steering and handling. That being said, I've driven it smack dab in the middle of some really unforgiving terrain and it's shown me nothing but love. 
The Kodiak sound system and generous storage spaces also get Cyrus's thumbs up over the drive. Speaking of which, the Kodiak can accommodate a lot of luggage with the last row down, but the big surprise was the Slavia that gobbled up the biggest of suitcases with ease. Soon we find ourselves higher than the mountains that have been giving us company all these days. The final ascent to Umlingla is very gentle, it's very gradual, but you have to remember that we are still very, very high up. We are upwards of 17,000 feet at this point. And I can finally feel the effects of the altitude on the engine because this motor is not giving its all at this point of time. But still, I have enough power to make the climb up with ease. And then we summit. The bright yellow BRO board welcomes us to Umlingla. We are officially at a motorist's Everest. This is it. We've made it to the highest point of our road trip. We are at Umlingla, 19,024 feet above sea level. This is the highest motorable road in the world. The Shlodas, they've performed absolutely flawlessly throughout. And to think about it, we had an altitude way higher than what these cars were even tested at. So it's reason to celebrate for us. Uh, we will spend some chill out time here, literally so, and uh, make our move before the lack of oxygen or the cold gets to us. Uh, side note, on the way back, I think I'm going to bribe Cyrus for the keys of the Kodiak. I can really use the seat warmers. Mm -hmm.